the last piece of this is our um, highly processed plant-based oils. Some of this we went through in the wink that we did not too long ago. So this is a little bit of a reiteration, but I also added some additional info here. Um, as a reiteration, the things that we're trying to avoid when it comes to highly processed plant-based oils is the hydrogenated and partially hydrogenated fats, all the fake butters and spreads, um, and then the highly processed oils such as canola, corn, soybean, vegetable, grapeseed, safflower, rice bran, and other refined oils. Um, you could throw things like peanut oil in there. And then sunflower oil, you know, <clears throat> I'm, I think we may even ch change our stance on this. Sunflower oil is extremely high in polyunsaturates. Um, but if it's high steric or, or high oleic, then it is dominant in monounsaturated fats, which makes it less problematic, but I still don't think it's ideal. So that's one of our little kind of gray areas pieces. All right, so um, uh, as a refresher, how these highly processed plant-based oils are made, um, we gather seeds, which by the way, these are not seeds that any human being is gonna eat in the first place. Um, they're heated to extremely high temperatures and then they're processed with some petroleum-based solvent. And they have to take a massive amount of these seeds, by the way, to get some kind of oil out of it. Imagine like corn is not inherently oily. Like I can press a, a coconut and get oil out of it. I can press olives and get oil out of it, right? Um, avocados are super fatty, but like, how do you get oil out of a corn? How do you get oil out of soybean, right? You have to have a massive amount of these seeds and they have to be processed at really high temperatures. And then you have to use a solvent to separate everything. And then you have to use chemicals to deodorize the whole thing because they stink as far as what I understand, right? And then um, and then you use more chemicals to improve the odor of it. So it's just like, it's just a recipe for a lot of disastrous stuff. So um, the reason that these things are bad for health is because they're very high in linoleic acid, which is an omega-6 fatty acid, which in, in very small amounts, if it's pristine and not oxidized, it's something that the body can use, it's, it's useful, but it's not something that we have to consciously go out of our way to get because um, it's found in small amounts in just about everything. So um, what happens is by consuming these, we build our cell structure and therefore our bodily structure with these um, omega-6 highly, potentially highly oxidative fats. Um, it causes a lot of oxidative damage and stress and inflammation, and it clogs up the energy creation system of the mitochondria, and it makes us more carb dependent without us realizing that's what's happening. Some really good resources, and I'll include this in, the, in this uh, video and post, are going to be Paul Saladino. Uh, Tucker Goodrich has been on all the top podcasts, and he's just he's got a, a wealth of information. I love the way that he explains things. Um, we mentioned before Dr. Kate Shanahan, um, her recent book, The Fat Burn Fix, I think it is, is just an amazing book, and she does a really, really good explanation of this. But, you know, this whole highly processed seed oil um, uh, concept or, or um uh, all, all the information associated with it, it's so prevalent now in the ancestral health realm. Like there's just not a lack of information there for sure. Um, so, you know, what we see now is it's very clear that the um, increase in consumption of these highly processed plant-based oils, is, it coincides with all the increase of our um, disease, uh, modern diseases of civilization. And for the longest time, a lot of people associate that with a high sugar and carb intake, but we don't really see that being as much of a problem, or at least it's an equal problem to the consumption of these highly processed plant-based oils. Highly recommend uh, Dr. Kate Shanahan's book there. So um, something to think about, you know, saturated fats, let's just go through just a little education on the different types of fats. Saturated fats, when we hear things like saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated, saturated fats are extremely stable because they have every carbon bond is occupied, right? So um, if you look at uh, one of the pictures, you can pull up Wikipedia and look at saturated fatty acids. You'll see it's just a straight line with no kinks in it. Um, saturated fats are extremely stable. They're heat resistant. They don't go rancid. That's why you can keep, you know, most of these saturated fats just in your cupboard and in your pantry and you don't have to refrigerate them. Um, they usually stay solid at room temperature and they're not essential because we can make them, but they're extremely helpful because we use them for a lot of different things. We use them for structure and we also use them for energy. Um, and they can be stored for sure. And they're found mainly in animal foods and animal fats and some of the tropical fats and oils like palm oil and coconut oil. If we look at monounsaturated fats, these are relatively stable. They're not as stable and heat resistant as saturated fats because monounsaturated means we have this one bond that is not occupied. And so there's this little kink in the structure. And so it makes it just a little bit more delicate. Um, they don't go rancid very easily. They're usually liquid at room temperature versus solid at room temperature. Um, they're also not essential because we can make it from saturated fats if we have to, but that doesn't mean they can't be useful. 
Um, they can be used for energy. So that's really good to know, you know, so I'm eating some of these things that are a combination of saturated fat and monounsaturated fats. Like I'm getting some potential structural use out of it, but I'm also getting some energy use out of it. Um, and then these things are found in things like some animal foods, animal fats, avocados, olive oil. You know, this is one of the why the touted benefits of like olive, olive oil and avocado oil. And then we have the polyunsaturated fats. So the polyunsaturated fats, um, they have multiple bonds that are not occupied and you'll see all these different kinks in them. It, you know, it just reminds me of this thing that's kind of going crazy. And, and if it just bumps into the wrong thing, it can kind of explode. And if it gets heat on it and it gets um, some oxygen on it, it can oxidize. And so these things are extremely unstable and um, they are not safe for cooking for sure. They go rancid very easy. They stay liquid all the time, even if you refrigerate them. Um, and they're found usually in nuts and seeds and um, a little bit in, in all foods, right? So it's like everything that has some fat is usually going to have a combination of all these fats, but it's in proportion. I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. But then these highly processed plant-based oils are almost nothing but these polyunsaturated fats. So now if we go back to how these things are processed, we have these very, very delicate um, polyunsaturated oils that are very... Um, uh, very delicate as far as like, you know, they're not resistant to heat, they're not resistant to sunlight, they're not resistant to oxidative damage. And then to process these things, the, the modern oils here, we have to put them under excessive heat and add solvents and things. So it's like, you already have this thing that's very sensitive anyway, and you're just obliterating it. So any potential nutritional value has just been blown out of the thing. Um, and, and we're left with something that's extremely toxic. So, so as some examples here, um, if we look at the comp the fatty acid composition of a piece of meat, like a steak, we've got about 60% saturated fats. We got about 30% monounsaturated saturated fat. We got about 3% polyunsaturated fat. And that's just the naturally occurring fats in a healthy piece of meat. This is a grass fed grass finished. Okay. So this should give you an idea of what things would look like. Now the, I think the big takeaway here is just eat real food and you're getting the perfect balance of these fatty acids anyway. Now, if I look at something like some good quality butter, uh, something very similar it has zero polyunsaturated fats, but 63% saturated fat, 26% monounsaturated. If I look at something like some tallow from a bison, um, similar proportions, 50% saturated fat, 47% uh, monounsaturated fat, but again, very low polyunsaturated fats, if any. And again, they're coming from natural sources. If we look at bacon, we've got, believe it or not, bacon is, is dominantly monounsaturated fat. And then if we look at, what was that last one? I meant to have a picture there or something. What was that? 30, 40, 20? I can't remember what the heck that was. Sorry about that. Bacon. What was the other fat that I had in there? Anyway, um, so uh, that should give you some insight into how we want to consume these things. Now, if we look at, we have this really useful handout that we put together last year. It's um, cooking with fats and oils where we have the ones that are the best ones for cooking with. Now, now that we understand saturated fats are very protected, um, they're very heat stable. This is why we prefer to cook with these things. And we see the majority of these things that are mainly saturated are going to be the best things to cook with. Oh, that was chicken fat. That's what that was. I meant to put a chicken on there and then I jumped on the call. So if we look at chicken fat, chicken fat, pretend there's a chicken there is going to be 30% saturated, 44% monounsaturated, 20% polyunsaturated. So I get the question sometimes, like, what's the proportion of the different types of meats that we should be consuming? Because a, a lot of us were bacon fanatics for the majority of our early part of our SHT days, you know? I think the perfect proportions is going to be majority red meat and herbivore meat or ruminant meat, you know, like uh, cows and bison, and elk and things like that. So I'd say, you know, maybe over half of what you consume needs to be something in that red meat realm. And then you could say maybe like uh, a quarter could be pork based. And then I would say like poultry and things like that would be very, very small. Now, eggs are not going to fall into this category. Egg, eggs, I could pull up this, the content and I'll actually do that for the resources I put together, but they have a pretty favorable fatty acid profile, very similar to these other ones here. So, um, so that should give you an idea what, of how we want to consume these things. But if I look at this cooking oil sheet, it actually kind of gives you a very similar hierarchy and structure. You know, we've got the dominantly saturated fats, which is the majority of what we want to consume. This is the stuff that we can cook with. Um, and then we have the, the ones that are dominant and monounsaturated fats that are a little bit more delicate. So we want less of these. And usually we're just going to use these as finishing agents. We're going to use it for salad dressings because they stay liquid at room temperature most of the time. And then we're rarely ever going to turn into anything or turn to anything that's going to be dominant in polyunsaturated fats. 
And the takeaways from, from this highly processed plant-based oils piece is that if we just eat real food according to the way that we recommend, then we're naturally getting this um, perfect balance of fatty acid profiles. Um, I would say when it comes to additional fats that you're using for cooking and things like that, I would always prioritize animal fats, um, butter being one of the animal fats. I think butter's great. Um, uh, lard or uh, uh, tallow would be preferential over lard probably because as we saw from the bacon piece, uh, lard is going to have more monounsaturated than uh, saturated fat, but it's not any kind of a, anything to be concerned about, you know? Um, but, and then of course we never want to use polyunsaturated fats.